Welcome, everyone. We are so excited to have two special guests with us today. We have Kathy Jo Van and Stacy Felzer. And these two ladies are just rocking the world when it comes to mentorship. And so we're thrilled to have them. Uh, I'd like to take just a moment and introduce the two ladies. And uh, then we're going to jump right into a riveting session. Make sure you write down your questions or you can, you can put them in the chat if you want. We'll check the chat throughout or um, you know, we'll go live so that everyone can ask their questions uh, and be answered today while we're speaking. So let me uh, introduce Kathy Jo first. She sometimes goes by KJ. And Kathy Jo is an industry veteran of a, and former senior vice president of Southwire. Throughout her 30 year career in the electrical industry, KJ built a reputation for her leadership skills and positive impact for her employers and for the industry overall. Following her retirement, okay, I'm laughing at that, KJ, because <laughs> I think you're more busy now. <laughs> so she did retire in 2017, but she started another chapter of her life, which is awesome. And her focus is actually staying connected and giving back to the industry that has meant so much to her and to her family. And she now provides workshops and custom programs that empower companies and individuals to understand the value of mentoring and defining a path to capitalize on these benefits. Uh, in 2020, she actually uh, created a partnership with Stacey Felzer, and they have launched Empowering Women Mentorship Program, which we're going to talk about today. And that's very much focused on uh, providing up and coming women in the electrical industry specifically. Uh, with the opportunity to broaden their knowledge, to gain confidence, elevate capabilities, and stand out through that power of networking. So KJ, welcome. We are thrilled to have you here. Thank you, Vicki. Thrilled to be here. So excited. And Kathy, comes, uh, she comes to us from um, uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, just came back from Arizona. She's probably regretting that though, aren't you? Because it's a little bit colder here. <laughs> very, good, very good timing. Strategic. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And so let me introduce Stacy Felzer. Stacy is an experienced marketing professional. She has 20 years of experience in manufacturing, wholesale distribution. She's held various roles in marketing, sales, business development, and product management. She's held positions with Acuity Brands, uh, HD Supply, and Annexter. She's now the owner of her own marketing company called Cord Marketing Services. And it's a company created to help companies uh, create basically their big picture marketing plans, and then she works to help them execute the plans. She also specializes in creating marketing in tune with her customers' needs, from strategic marketing plans to branding, demand generation to content marketing, striving to ensure her marketing is hitting the right chord for her customers. Um, she's also passionate about her work in mentoring and coaching, and she's volunteered with the NAED Women in Industry Committee, she was part of building a women's network at Annexter, empowering over 400 women to come together. And that's actually what led this relationship between um, KJ and Stacy. And so they have created this fabulous company, now pairing mentors and mentees. And we're thrilled to have you both here today because this, this topic comes up all the time with respect to, how, first of all, even how do you find a mentor? And why would somebody want to be a mentor to someone else? Like this comes up often. So I'm excited to uh, have this conversation with you ladies and, you know, just really learn from your insights and um, share that with our audience. So um, let's just jump right in. So what made you guys decide that, you know, this was an initiative that was important to your connections and to your industry? Well, interesting, you know, how... Um serendipity sometimes plays a role and, and, and there's, everybody's connected throughout the world. And last year in April, I was talking to two very good friends in the industry and mentors of mine and sharing with them that I had this frustration of all these ideas like, around my goal, which is to stay connected and give back. Mm -hmm. But taking those ideas from a concept in my brain to reality was where I was really struggling. And both of them almost simultaneously said, you need to reach out to Stacy. And so I had met Stacy at, at the NAD Women in Industry events, and we'd seen we'd both been members of the, the industry for a long time. 
but we just hadn't connected for several years. So within a week, I connected with her. Uh, we talked about the ideas. We talked about collaboration and both of us and having our, our a passion around mentoring and, and giving back to the industry. And within, I think it was 60 days, we took the template that I'd created and we customized it. We came up with the name and we announced the Empowering Women Mentorship Program. Wow. <laughs> that was fast. Stacey, what do you think about that whirlwind <laughs> tour? You know, for, I mean, when it started, the exciting thing was, as you know, as she mentioned, we, we had a lot of mutual friends. So the fact that someone said immediately contact Stacy was, was great and exciting. Um, and when Kathy Joe and I started talking, I mean, she was talking about things that I'm equally as passionate about. And I think you can tell with the fact that we were able to launch it that fast, we both were excited to be able to, to get this out to people and to help. Um, you know, it was an exciting program and, you know, being able to put together the, the communication pieces and, and stuff, there was just such great groundwork. And I had actually had the opportunity to hear Kathy Jo talk about mentoring. And so I knew her passion behind it and it just fits so well with, with mine as well. And, and, you know, we both have been mentored by a lot of the same people. And, and so I think we were really in lockstep with, with where we wanted to go and what we thought we could accomplish with this program, which that's exciting to be a part of. So I'm, I'm grateful that our, our contacts connected us and got us on the same path and really just, it's been so much fun and so rewarding to be a part of this and work with Kathy Joe on it. So, so it's been well, awesome. And what, what we found was amazing was that we started and we said, let's do a great job with a very limited number in the inaugural program. Mm -hmm. So our goal was to have about 12 mentees that we could match up with a mentor from our network of people. And we, our initial outreach, we each just emailed 10 contacts in the industry, asking them to sponsor an up and coming woman that they know of that they wanted to invest in. And within a week, we had 12. Wow. <laughs> And then we had 20 and we finally just capped it at 21 with a waiting list. Yeah. Um, but we, we decided, look, let's just limit, keep it limited and do a great job with the, you know, the, the critical few versus the trivial many. Yeah. Um, and we were thrilled to have um, a number of like industry veterans that, that gladly raised their hand and agreed to be a mentor in the program as well. Wow, that's amazing. So you ladies certainly don't let any grass grow under your feet. So I love that. <laughs> You're moving and shaking. So tell us though, because I am sure a lot of our audience wants to understand, um, you know, more about how do you even find a mentor? I mean, I hear this a lot, even from my clients, they'll say, you know, Vicki, like, I know I need to have a mentor in this or that, but I don't know how to ask. I don't know how to go about it. So what would, or how do you, you know, work with your, your, your uh, program members to help them find those right mentors? Well, in, in our program, which is, I would say it's like a semi-formal program because we provide some structure, but we give the mentoring pairs a lot of flexibility to make the journey their own because every mentoring relationship is unique in its own. But we really start the foundation is with an application. So the mentees complete an application and in that, we help them take a very intentional approach to their mentoring journey, which is a self-assessment. And in that self-assessment, they identify only two to three areas they want to work on. Okay. So instead of just wide open, will you yeah. be my mentor? We really help them narrow it to say, I want to work on my career planning or my presentation skills or how to read a P&L. Um, we have personal development and professional development. So we use that as the, as the foundation. And then we have our mentors complete a profile that they identify their areas of strength. And then in the matching process, we match up the, um, the mentee's area of focus with the mentor's area of strength. And, that, and then we, we, we do a couple of different things and, and we think the matching process is another critical part to it. So we, we match just based on focus and strengths, but then we take into account other things that I might know personally about the mentor, about the mentee, and, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a science and an art. Okay. Oh, I like how you say that, science and an art, because I think you're right. Sometimes we get hung up on, you know, different, you know, 
people being afraid to even approach a mentor, right? And so it is a bit, it is a bit of the art and the science together. So Stacy, what about from your perspective, like maybe even share some examples of, of how you have found your own mentors in the past? Yeah. So I, that was one of the things that I really liked about this was we gave them an entry, like we made it easy for them to identify the areas that they needed to focus on. And, you know, I've had a couple different instances to where, you know, I through uh, an annual review, you know, I recognized with the help of my leader, my manager, that um, I needed to further my, my knowledge and business acumen you know, really wanted to be able to dig in and understand the business and, and what really made it run and the financial side of things. And so I was connected in a very formal mentorship program with, um, with someone in the company that that was their background. Um, they were the strategic planning FP&A whole department in the, the company. And so, you know, recognizing that need, we immediately started there. Our mentoring actually evolved into so much more because we both got laid off the exact same day. And it turned out she mentored me through looking for another job and working through that process. So I think as long as you can find somewhere to start and what I have found is if you have an ask, a specific ask for a mentor, I think it's easier to approach someone. Um, when I have um, been asked to mentor someone, when some com someone comes to me and says, you know, I have this big presentation coming up in a couple months and I really would like to, to really hone my skills. I've seen you present, you're comfortable, you're whatever it is. Um, but you have like, you recognize immediately what they are looking for and what they want to accomplish. And then that um, for me allows me to look and say, you know what, I can help them with these things. These are areas that I feel confident in being able to share information. So, um, so that's what I, I think, you know, that was what was another really appealing part of our program that I think people respond to well, is we give them the self-assessment, they get the opportunity to dig in and look at what they, what areas they want to focus on. And then they have that starting point with their mentor. So they can go in and say, Hey, here's the three areas that I've identified. Can you help me in these areas? Nice. And I think that helps make the conversation get started a little bit easier. So I'm just curious. Yeah, I absolutely. I agree with you. So, but I, one area I'm curious about, because I hear this often, um, how did that make you feel when that person came to you and said, Hey, Cece, can you, you know, help me out with this? What, what thoughts went through your head? <laughs> yeah. So for, of course you have that, like, Oh, wait, am I actually somebody who can help them with this? You know, you have those doubts. Like, do I have the expertise in this area to be able to help this person? But because the ask was so specific, um, you know, in that case, my presentation style is, is pretty casual and conversational. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've gotten feedback through my career that I should be more professional. And then I also got feedback that said, be yourself. You're so much more authentic for me. I'd rather come across as approachable and somebody who somebody wants to come up and talk to after they see me present. And so I've gotten comfortable with my presentation style, style and, and comfortable with my, my skill set, but I know it's not for everybody. So when the person approached me and said, I liked the way you presented, that's how I would like to present. It became, it made me right at ease that said, okay, I don't have to try and teach you something that, you know, I can teach you what I know and I can share what I've learned and how I got to this point. And so, um, so that helped immensely and helped put me at ease to, uh, to know that I wasn't trying to, you know, teach something I wasn't confident in. Well, or, I love yeah. that. I love that because, um, actually a call I was on earlier today, we were talking about that specifically and like, you know, why would, why would a mentor want to work with somebody? Right. And so I, I said to them, well, if somebody came to you and said, hey, you have this great expertise or in your situation, I love the way you present, that actually makes you feel good, right? So, so it's a mutual respect between the mentor and the mentee. And one of the things I think in this program, what we've learned too is you start out with that. You may start out with one topic. It evolves into other things. And a lot of times our mentors are coming away with a lot of information and, and learning things um, about themselves or about topics that they didn't necessarily go in knowing that they were going to, to get so much out of the, the mentor mentee relationship as well. Yeah. So just to clarify that you're talking about the mentor, right? Yes. Mentor gets a lot from this. Yeah. I think that's a huge part because so many times people think, oh, you know, 
why would they want to spend time with me? Or, or I'm asking them to take time. And really it is a mutual beneficial relationship because it goes both ways, right? You do learn things and you're helping somebody else, which, which that's always really gratifying. Vicky, yeah. I love, I love when a, one, a big success story in our inaugural program, this young lady with a distributor was matched up with the CEO of a large electrical contractor, right? And she called me just thanking me so much for making that connection. And, and she wanted to make two points. One was that at first she wondered why the heck did we match her up with this guy? They didn't really have those clunky, awkward conversations, but she remembers me saying in the kickoff, like it might be clunky at first, but stick with it and, and you'll find a connection. And she said, had she not heard that, she probably would have kind of given up. But after three meetings, they found a connection and she said she never would have met, their paths wouldn't have crossed otherwise if it hadn't been for our program. And she learned so much. And then I reached out to, to the CEO and I asked him about his experience. And he said, KJ, you would not believe how much she taught me. Aww. So it is truly that mutually beneficial relationship where the mentee brings some to the party. Maybe they're learning a lot, but we really encourage them to, to have confidence that they bring something to the party as well. And they share a lot with their mentors. Yeah, KJ, I'm so glad you brought that up and, and shared that story because that's a big win, right? And so many times that clunkiness gets in the way. So maybe you can just dig into that a little bit with us. Like, how do you get through the clunky, right? Because because you're telling them this, but if I'm an individual and I'm looking for a mentor, maybe I'm not in a program, um, which I love. I mean, you, you and I've talked about this. I'd love to see you ladies expand this beyond electrical. <laughs> Because I think it's, I think it's so worthwhile. But how do you help that person get past the clunky? So we, so we have a couple of things. We provide a guidebook that gives the mentees and the mentors both ideas of like conversation starters. And and after the inaugural program, the feedback we got was that they wanted more ideas of like, here's a sample agenda for your first meeting. Here's the thing, like four or five questions you might start with. Um, and then we also, Stacy and I are both here for both our mentors and mentees. I just had a call yesterday with one of our mentors in the program that she's challenged that she's, one is she's afraid she's not doing it right. Cause we're, you know, a lot of our mentors are type A personalities and they wanna be perfect and they don't can't just let go of control and let the mentee run the relationship. Um, and so I re just re-encouraged her that, you know, you just need to let the mentee take the lead but also know that, that there's no one right way to do it, right? And so get, cut yourself some slack a little bit. Sometimes that's hard. And sometimes it's hard that, that awkward silence when it's like, okay, we're 30 minutes into this meeting and what are we gonna talk about? Um, and so we give them those, those tools to try to help that. A lot of the time, it's amazing. I mean, they, they hit it off so well, in fact, we just had one of our mentors in this program uh, this past weekend. He's a dear friend of mine. He had a stroke. Oh. So I sent an email out to all the participants to let them know and ask them to keep him in their prayers. And within, I couldn't even get the phone number of the mentee that he's assigned to. She called me in tears because she, in just two meetings, had had such a connection with her mentor. So those two hit it off right away. You know, and then others, you know, like the, the one I talked to is it's a little clunky, but we really we're here to support them. We give them all the tools to, to try to make it um, uh, foster a successful relationship. And, and even with that, you're still going to have some that maybe just don't don't work out. Yeah. Um, and it's not a reflection of a, a, a mismatch. It's just a reflection of sometimes the mentee isn't ready to do the work because our program puts a lot of the work on the mentee. Yes. Um, and we do that for a reason. We want the mentee to have, to manage her own learning, have a vested interest in it. We want her to s ask insightful questions. So then that also helps our mentors can just show up and share their experiences, their stories, their insights. Um, and when, I, when we tell them it's, it's really a six hour commitment six one hour meetings over a 12 week, we really mean that. You don't have to, the mentors, we don't ask them to do a lot of prep work or take notes or you know, follow up 
as managers, as leaders, we're used to taking, okay, as a result of the meeting, here's our action items, right? We try to ask the mentors to take a back seat to that and encourage the mentees to take that leadership role. And that, that helps the mentees actually not only develop the one or two areas they're working on, but it helps them develop their leadership skills too. I love that. I love that. So a couple of questions came to mind as you, as you were saying that, uh, and either of you can answer it for sure. So one, so you answered the question on, so it's a six hour commitment, one hour every couple of weeks or once a month, that kind of thing. But so one question is, what does the mentee have to do? Are you doing some sort of like uh, prerequisite as far as questions you're asking them to think about? Because that, to me, that's a really key part of knowing why you want to go talk to a mentor, right? So that's one piece of it. And then I think the other one is um, when you talk about that follow-up, right? Like, you know, how that mentee really, because if you're not secure, how do you drive that connection? So either one of you can answer. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, so we actually, we asked them to check in. We asked them to let us know when they have had a meeting. Okay. So, and really that is the extent of what we ask them. We want them to have the ability to talk freely, to know that their conversations with their mentor are confidential. Um, so we don't necessarily ask for a report out on what they've talked about in their meeting, just that the meeting has happened. Um, as Kathy Joe talked about, we make sure they know that we're here. So sometimes when they check in, they might.